Today, we got called in to look at a high-performance home which achieved an 8.3 net hertz star. It's supposed to be a top-notch, top-of-the-line home, but the homeowner has a bit of comfort issue with this home. He called us in to investigate what causes it. Ethan, you've been with us for more than two years now. When it talks about uncomfortable home, what are the few issues that you come up in mind? So the first thing I would think of is uh, air leakage. If the home is, is leaky, then it can't retain heat as well as a more airtight home. And secondly, it would just be uh, insulation installation. If the insulation is not bodied to your airtight membrane, it can't retain heat as a, a home that is uh, well installed with insulation. And lastly, it would just be your windows and any sliding doors to your backyard. If those uh, elements are not airtight, it, it will cause issues with air leakage as well. Pretty good. Let's start investigating. Okay, after checking the air leakage, we are going to look through the building envelope to see how consistent the insulation is being installed. Let's have a look. There's an easy one and a half degree temperature difference between the framing element and the insulation. This is a hallmark of steel frame construction. And you can see, especially at the corner, where you've got maximum surface area to lose heat to the outside, the temperature drops a lot cooler than the other more typical steel elements. You can see there's almost one degree temperature difference between the corner and the remaining steel frame. As we can see, the further closer to the indoor, the warmer the steel studs are. This is an indication of quite a bad thermal bridging through this steel frame element. But on the flip side, the consistency of the insulation bat installation is pretty good. There's not much color variance between different portions, which is a good sign of pretty decent installation workmanship. Ah, what do you see there, Ethan? Uh, so what I'm saying is um, the floor temperature, you can see at the top there, it's uh, 16 degrees. But when I moved over to the living room, it jumped up to 17.7 .7 degrees. It looks like there's a very localized problem for that room in particular. Yeah, definitely. Do you have any idea why it happened? Uh, so that, that room below is actually an overhand that is also adjoining a car park that could be uh, either insulation missing there or just air leakage problems. Yes, it's more than likely there is some insulation issue there. It could be one of the three problems. It could be missing insulation completely, but based on the temperature it hit, it doesn't look that bad to a point. It's missing insulation. Because even now, outside is 17, 18 degrees. I did some thermal image to check the underside of that overhang. But overnight, it was down to 10, 12 degrees. So it could be the thermal lose overnight and it keeps the temperature. When we start early this morning, it was at around 14 degrees. It's more like a insufficient insulation. But having said that, it could also be the position of the insulation. Because typically for walls or ceiling, the insulation are installed so it is touching and butting to the plasterboard where the air barrier is. But in these type of underfloor insulation system, more than likely the installation method used in Melbourne, Victoria, they put straps between the steel element. The insulation is just sitting on those straps. That means between the four board and the insulation, there could be 50 up to 100 mil air gap. And think about it because no one is sealing the outside of that overhang surface. Air can circulate around the insulation, which greatly reduces the performance of that insulation bat. And that is something 
if the NetHurst people watch this video, they should consider how to include that kind of options in their software. They've been doing very well in terms of the wall and the roof and the ceiling insulation, but the underfloor, there is still a fair bit of improvement that they can implement, graduate over time. I know they are very busy, but consider this. So just look at the skylight of the building and you can just say there's basically no insulation around this cavity. Uh, normally when the, it, it is a ceiling insulation, it sits on top of ceiling, but like such a cavity with vertical walls, they just don't insulate it. We're now looking at the split unit. Uh, you can see on top of the split unit, there's just missing insulation all around from the wall to the ceiling. On this wall, there is a very unusual pattern of a hot patch going down. Initially, when I see it, I thought, is there some kind of water leak because the shape or the pattern looks like water leak? But and then when I move up further, there is a clear line going across and connecting to the split unit. After having a chat with the homeowner, we find out this home is using multi-head system, which means there's a large outdoor unit running multiple rooms. And they typically run long refrigerant pipes. And where we see the hot patch is where the refrigerant pipe is running. When we were doing the air tightness test, the result is already pretty good and we couldn't locate any air leak at the doors and windows except a small leak around the door hinges which is understandable your door seal can't perform all around your door unless you install one of those submarine door but what is interesting is this home most of the leakage is what we call the indirect leakage which is not directly coming through the building envelope but passing other construction elements and come out at weak points such as all these cavity sliders. In some of our other videos, we explain how the air can come through your roof cavities, going through your wall cavity and come to all these cavity sliders and then leak out. As you can see in some of our tissue paper tests, how strong the air moving through the cavity slider. This is something that can be solved by encasing the door cassette, which is highly doable in new construction. For existing home, it will take a bit extra work to cut out certain part of the plasterboard to try to do that improvement. The garage door, the homeowner added some seal to it. And you can see still a bit of movement, but nothing compared to the bear. The blow door results tell us the performance of this home is pretty good compared to the latest uh, national construction code. It's less than half of the air leakage compared to the code requirement. But yet the occupant, the homeowner, is not too happy about the comfort level. Mainly there are two or three issues. One, the cavity slider air leak. Number two, the insufficient thermal insulation at the overhang portion of the front of the house. Number three is the thermal bridging at all the steel studs. If you don't keep your heating system running, those thermal bridge can bring the surface temperature of your plasterboard below the drill point temperature which is when the air start to condense into water. If that happens, you will have a lot of damage to the plasterboard, mold growth, shadowing on your wall, which none of this you want. The NetHurst modeling already show if you warm your house, run your heating, you won't be spending too much. 